Hello, this is Mike at Game for Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing game development for Complete Beginners tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to look at basically the beginning of Lua programming. I'm going to mention a couple of concepts that we're going to cover down the road. I'm trying to keep all of these tutorials bite-sized so that um, you can go at your own pace. So I'm not going to go on too long. I'm not going to try to explain too many concepts. Today we are just going to cover the entry point of a program, program control and flow, and then potentially commenting. And that's about it. Now I'm going to mention a few things like functions and variables, but we'll look at those later on. So very soon, uh, probably those are the next two topics actually, but we're not going to go into a lot of detail on them today. So if you find yourself a little confused about a couple things in this video, don't worry, they're covered very, very shortly. I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself, but again, I'm trying not to explain too many things all at once. All right, so jump on in. Um, now, in a previous optional tutorial, I talked about um, IDEs and text editors available for using Lua. And what you see in front of you is IntelliJ IDE. I'm just using this because it's got a nice presentation mode, makes it very easy for you to read. Now, keep in mind, you can use whatever editor, whatever combo you want. Watch that other video if you haven't and you need to know more. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this guy. You can use whatever you want, but the physical steps I'm about to go through to create a script are going to be different in whatever language you're, or whatever IDE or text editor you're using. So just be aware of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new script in our project. So just new Lua script. And I'm calling it main.lua. Now there's some importance to this name. Uh, main can be called whatever it wants, but when we get down to being love, um, love looks for a file called main. And the reason behind this is a lot of programming languages have a special bit of code, which is the entry point into the program. It's the way of saying to their compiler or, or whatever, their interpreter, that, hey, I start here. Now Lua doesn't do that. Lua starts with whatever file you pass into the Lua interpreter. So at the very beginning, it goes from there. We'll get into that a little bit more in more detail. However, when we move on to love programming, love is going to look specifically for a file called main. So that's why I'm using that as a naming convention. So when we get down the road a little bit later on, you'll know that main is your starting point. Now it doesn't have to be, I want to make that clear until we're dealing with love. So when you're dealing with just Lua, the name of your file means nothing. As long as it is typed in a way that is compatible with the file system, you're good to go. Now the key thing is though, it needs to have that dot Lua extension. And specifically, your text editor or your IDE will not know it's dealing with a Lua file and won't give you proper highlighting or syntax or um, IntelliSense, etc. if you don't have that .lua extension. So make sure you have that. And go ahead, here we have a brand new file. I'm going to get rid of what they create for us here. So we've got a nice empty file and I'm going to save it. Now I want to show you something. I'm in a tool right now, but behind the scenes, so let's just grab this guy and we'll go down to Show in Explorer and you'll see it's just a file in a folder. So there's nothing really magical going on here. And at the same time, that file is run by passing it to the Lua interpreter like that. Now it doesn't do anything uh, because there's, there's no code or logic in that actual script, but that's how it can be done. Now I want you to know something else here is I could have run this directly in my IDE. I could have run it through run in Lua and it'll run within a window within. But for all this sakes, to try and be consistent with everybody, I'm going to run it from a separate command line window uh, so that things run a little bit smoother and they're more consistent regardless to what IDE you're using. But one of the nice things about an IDE is it does give you this ability um, to run your code directly from your editor. All right. So we have this file, we ran it from the command line and you saw it ran just fine. Now one last thing to be aware of here is I used the command Lua 5.2 because I'm using Lua version 5.2 but the key thing is I've added this guy to my path. Um, so my path variable, if you don't know, Google that one. You can actually add executables to the path so that they're available from anywhere on the command line. But if you don't do that, otherwise instead of calling it that way, you have to pass it in the entire path like that or you'll get some kind of a file not found error or whatever. So just be aware of that, depending on how you've configured your um, system, you should probably add Lua to your path. It makes life a lot simpler. If you need a tutorial on doing so, let me know and I'll make one. So anyways, we're now here, we've got our code. It does nothing, uh, but let's go from there. Now, the key thing to understand is, as I mentioned earlier, some programs have this main entry point. And in this case, the entry point is whatever script you pass in. So the entry point is main.lua. And then it starts at the very top and goes down. So we've done this program a couple of times already. Let's do it one more time because this is tradition. 
and this prints out the words hello world. So we save that, we'll go ahead and run it, make sure that everything is set up fine. There you go. So you see, hello world is printed out. That's the simplest program pretty much do you start with any um, programming language out there. And this here is a function, and this here is a constant string. Now, don't worry about either of those things because this is a type of variable, sort of, and this is a type of function, and I will cover both in more detail very soon. So don't get caught up on that. Think of it just as this is the way you print out to the console. Now, the console is the fancy programmer term for the command line or um, your terminal window. So uh, it's often called either standard out or the console. So those um, terminal, standard out, and console are all used very interchangeably, but it's a nice just way of saying your command line. So this just prints out the text, hello world to your command line. Now we've only never done this far, so we don't really get how programs execute. Let's add a little bit more detail here. So let's switch this one out. All right, I think my Bluetooth keyboard just conked out. Ah, it's back, okay, good. And we'll go, what is your name player? Okay, so now we've got a slightly more complicated program going on here and I'll save it and run it. And you'll see exactly what happens here. So first off, what is your name player? So I am Mike and it says, welcome to the game, Mike. Very, very complicated program. But I guess you technically just created your first game using Lua, so congratulations. Now let's go through quickly some of the things that are happening here. Now, a couple things I don't really wanna get into here is what this line is. It's very confusing, but don't worry. Um, this is just another example of a function, and this can be thought of as either a module or a table, and I will explain both of those in detail later, so don't worry about that. Just know that this command combined is reading um, a value from the console, just like this one is printing it back out. Now, there's a couple of other things going on here that you should be aware of. First off is this guy. What is player? Well, player is something called a variable. It's a value that can change. And this is another thing, I promise you, very soon. But we're going to go into it in more detail as well. But basically, this is the value that you read this into. And finally, we have a couple other things going on here. So here we, we set a value into player. And then here we use player as a value. And um, there's one thing I want to grain into your head very, very strongly, and I will explain in explicit detail later on. This is kind of bad. You should do this as this instead. And when I get to variables, I will explain exactly why, but I just did not want to start your programming career off on a bad note. So uh, just think of this as a better defined variable. It, it's got limitations on it and those limitations are good. And I will come to those very, very soon and explain why they're better. But I did not want to start, I wanted to start with a simple code and then add a little bit of complexity to it, but I didn't want you to start off using bad code, which if I hadn't added this in, it kind of would be. All right, so let's break down exactly what this program is doing. First off, we're just printing out to the console asking the player what their name is. Then we are reading in, until they hit the new line or the enter key, what they type on the keyboard. And we are storing that in the value player. Finally, we are saying, welcome to the game. And then you see this dot, dot, and then player. Now dot, dot is a magic thing. This is called an operator, just like equals over here is an operator. Now the equals operator that you're seeing here is for assignment. So when you have a single equals like that, the value on the right is assigned to the value on the left. And this is no different than we've seen consistently in math. So um, x equals four gives the value of four to x. And that's normal in algebra, same deal. Equals is just saying, assign this value on the right to the um, variable on the left. That's it. And then this one here is a special operator which is called for string concatenation, which basically is saying add this value as a string to this value as a string. Now the name string comes from string of characters, which is basically a fancy way of saying text. And again, that's, a, that's about data, that's about variables, and I'll go into that in more detail with variables. It's mostly about the program flow I want you to understand. So when we call 
this line right here, when we call Lua 5.2, we call Lua 5.2 and then pass in main.lua. It's important to know where the flow is happening. What happens is it comes in the very first line. Now this is an empty line and an empty line means nothing. So it's completely skipped. So then it just runs to this line from left to right. So it basically goes this way. And then it gets to the next line, left to right, just like you read a book. So the code in Lua goes top down, left to right. Now that sounds a little confusing. Like why is there a distinction? Well, the key thing here is lines don't actually matter. So this program and this program, so I'll go ahead and save that, are exactly the same thing as you can see from the results. So you have, do, 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 come on, go back. Um, you have no requirement to put these. That's why I'm saying the program runs left to right. That's important to understand and top down, but the top down is purely optional. Now, on the other hand, use it. Writing your code all on one line is a very bad practice. It makes it very hard to read code. And at the same time, you can put as many spaces in here as you want. So when it goes through and reads your code, it takes out all of the white space and it reads it left to right, top down. And now if you want for some reason to, actually that's not important to you right now. Um, so that is essentially it. Now one other concept I wanna get before we move on is uh, comments. Now I said here, this empty line is ignored. Now what happens if you wanna kind of explain or document how your code works? Well, that's where comments come in. So I could come here and go, this is a comment about how great this program is. Okay, so that is a comment. And what that does is that line is completely ignored by the Lua interpreter. So when you run Lua on that line, it goes and sees this character right here and says, oh, so, sorry. It sees this combination of characters, the two minus signs there, and says, oh, this is a comment, and just completely ignores it from that point on. Now, this is for a single line, and we could do it this way. Is line two, is line three, etc. So you can have the dash dash per line, or you can do a block comment. So if you have to comment a bunch of text, and you don't want to keep having to do dash dash per line, you can do dash dash, and then square bracket, square bracket, like that, and you'll notice, in my text editor, all the code below just went italic and gray. That's because I just did an open comment. And then we can come on down and finish it off with the bracket bracket. And this is the end of the comment. I can have as many lines as I like. It doesn't matter. They are all ignored. Anyways. So those are comments, nothing really special there. Just be aware of them and get in the habit of commenting your code. If you do something and you're like, oh, I don't know what this does, throw a comment in. Now at the same time, you can also comment on a line. A comment does not have to be on its own line. So I can sit here and go, uh, this line of code reads uh, the player name from the console. So I could throw a comment on like that. Again, you just need that left, left, that, sorry, that minus, minus, and then the, anything that follows for the rest of that line will be ignored. Now, um, what was I about to say? This kind of illustrates how that left to right thing is important. So this part of the line is evaluated, but then when it gets to the dash dash, it stops evaluating until it gets onto the new line or if you've got the multi-line comment until it finds the closing double square brackets. So that's kind of the basics. The only other thing I kind of want to mention very quickly is keywords. Now, essentially your code is going to be built up of four simple building blocks, just like Lego. Um, you build really complex things out of very simple concepts. And what we need to learn are variables, which we will cover, functions, so this is a variable, this is a function and we can define our own and we'll go into those with more detail. Uh, and then you need to know operators, which are things like you've got in mathematics, like you've got plus minus equals um, division, etc. All those things are normal operators. Well, programming languages have them too. And there's about a dozen of them to learn. They're nothing really outrageous. A lot of them you will just know, like equals should make sense to you. It's pretty intuitive. Uh, plus will make sense, minus will make sense, etc. cetera. Um, so you've got variables, you've got functions, you've got operators, and then you've got keywords. Now keywords are an important thing to understand right up front because that is essentially 
what makes a language the language. This is the, the core of a programming language. And think about it, English. English has a set of rules and words have special meanings. So you've got your verbs, your nouns, etc. They all kind of have a special purpose. Well, in programming, the same deal. A language is built up of simple words that are used together um, with functions and variables to make more complex structures, to make more complex versions, to make more complex versions, to make complete programs. So those keywords are right here. As of Lua 5.2, the keywords are and, break, do, else, else, if, and, false, for, function, go to, if, in, local, nil, not, or, repeat, return, then, true, until, and while. Those are the building blocks of all code. Now, those are also names that are special. You can't use them. You can't use them in a variable. Um, as exactly as they are. Now you can use a complex version of it. I can make a variable called, um, for example, me and you, that's fine. So if I said local me and you equals us, that's fine. If I do local and, you notice it got a little squiggly there. That is because that and is something called keyword or in some languages a reserved word and those language those words mean um those are the basic lego blocks those so those are the words that we are going to use to do things like um loop and uh declare functions or check conditions or and don't worry we will get into all of them in more detail later on just be aware there's a set of magic words and there's a very small set so as far as programming languages go that's a Oh, actually, there's a couple more off screen. No, there's not. That is a very, very, very short set of keywords to get to know. So that's one of what things that makes Lua nice to know. It's a very simple language in terms of um, what you need to memorize. But you can use these simple, simple commands to make a whole lot of magic happen. So uh, that's it. That's all we're going to cover today. This is your very first Lua program. As you could see, the key thing to know is the entry point is whatever script you pass into the Lua interpreter. It starts at the top, at the very left, goes left to right, down. Um, then we saw some other details, but don't worry too much about them because we are going to go into those in more detail as we go on. So hope that all made sense. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments and I will do my best to address them. A lot of your questions will probably be answered in the next tutorial or the one after. So if it's about functions or variables, hold off on them. We're going to get to those next. Um, hope you enjoyed that. See you all soon. Bye.